Welcome back. While I currently live in Texas, for a few years I actually lived in Wisconsin. And while I never quite picked up the accent, I did pick up some mementos and some memories along the way. Most of which are filled with snow, brats, spotted cow, and of course the Packers. But I never quite think about watches when I think about my time in Wisconsin. But I recently learned that Milwaukee is actually home to a very small microbrand known as 94 Watches. And they recently reached out to me and wanted to know if I would like to review their first automatic watch. Since I lived about an hour from Milwaukee, I was curious enough to say yes. Not to mention, it seemed like a good watch to check out. Good specs, decent price, and it's a pretty good looking watch. Not to mention, I'm always interested when a microbrand makes something that isn't another diver. So 9.4 has lent me this prototype, and I do believe it goes on sale starting March 1st with some pre-orders. But let's take a closer look and start with the specs. So first off, we are looking at a 40 millimeter wide case without the crown, and only 43 width, as it does have this rather small crown. It's signed, which is nice, but overall I think it's too small. Not only is it a little hard to use, but I think it looks off proportionally. Lug to lug is a little tricky here, as it does have an integrated bracelet, and I'll talk more about the bracelet at the end. But if you measure from the edge of the lug to the other edge like you normally would, you're only looking at a 46 millimeter. But if you measure from the middle where the end of the case meets the bracelet, you're looking more like 50. Yet that midpoint does slope down rather aggressively and just sort of blends into the bracelet as a first link. So overall, I'd say it wears somewhere in between, maybe like a 48. What's really remarkable here is how thin this watch is, with a total thickness of only 10 and a half. And that's with 100 meters of water resistance and the larger Seiko NH35A movement, which I think overall makes this the thinnest watch I've run across with an NH35A. And I really like how the case is designed when you look at it from this angle, where you have these thinner lugs that come out of that center section. And I think that just really accentuates how thin this case really is. Now, during summer and spring, how thick a watch is doesn't matter as much. Yet come fall and winter, when the longer sleeves and the layers start coming out of the closet, the thinner the better, especially if you're up in Milwaukee. You're also looking at a good solid weight of 125 grams. So it's got a good feel to it without being overly heavy. And as for price, we're looking at a pre-order right around $200 with an MSRP later of $300. For me, when I look at the case shape, I think it's a bit Royal Oak-like. And I think you can see that in the bracelet as well, where it has this mostly brush finish with these industrial sharp geometric edges. Yet I think there's enough changes to the bezel as well as the dial and the bracelet that I wouldn't say it's a straight up homage. Overall, the finishing is good, and it does have some interesting details to it. Yet, I think the finishing is my second biggest complaint here. I know it's supposed to have a rougher look, that's sort of the point of the design, but that also translates into some sharper edges on the bottom, especially at the very corner edges of the lugs. Now, looking down on the watch, you can see that there's vertical brushings going down the case and the clean bezel. Yet when you turn it on its side, you can see this very, very narrow beveled edge running down the length of the case. It's pretty faint, but it's a nice touch. What's more interesting is the bezel. As you can see at the side, it's polished to a mirror finish. Yet as you go up, it also has a beveled edge that has more of a circular brushed finish. It's just an interesting combination that just seems to draw your eyes towards the dial rather than the case. On the rear, you do have a screw down close case back that's laser etched with a 9.4 logo. Yet moving back to the front, you can see that it has a flat sapphire crystal sitting on top of a black teak dial, which has these vertical grooves that just run the entire length. And that's something I always like, as it just gives it a cool texture. The silver metallic indices are applied, and they are topped off with white loom, but they're not overly tall. Yet I think when you combine their height with the textured dial underneath it, it does give the watch a cool sense of depth, especially on a watch this thin. Now beyond the indices, you do have the chapter ring with minute indicators. The 9.4 logo is at the top, and one of the proposed changes is to make it applied rather than painted on as it is here. 
And I do like how it looks, especially against that black dial. But I think it might be just a touch too big, as it seems to be more the center of focus rather than the hands, and just sort of throws off the symmetry and the balance when you compare it to the minimal amount of text below. I also think the logo is going to be a bit divisive, kind of like the Phoebus logo. Some are going to like it, while others who'd much prefer something classically styled won't. But really, that's just personal preference. The hands are these wide, flattened, Daphne style hands, which just have this very thin strip of loom on top, and I'll get to that soon. They look good against the black dial, and their wide, flat shape make them very reflective which make them stand out nicely against the matte black beneath. I think the length of the hour and minute hands are good, but I think the second hand is maybe just a touch short. I think it throws off the design just a little bit, and I'd rather see it reach into the chapter ring. Now, I've nitpicked quite a few things here, and that always kind of happens when you really focus in on the details. But I think as you pull back with this watch, those individual components work nicely together. And when you combine that with the case, you just wind up with a nice, cool, casual watch that easily stands out in a crowd. At least until it gets dark, because the loom here is not good. It's actually my number one complaint. And just from this initial 15 minute time lapse, I knew it wasn't going to be very good. So for comparison, I broke out of Vostok and this $80 Chinese Cadison. And as you can see, it lasts about as long as the Cadison's hands, which is barely adequate. Now, it was mentioned that there will be some changes to the loom, in at least how it's applied, but hopefully they'll add some more to it as well, because as it is now, there really isn't much of a point in having any at all. Movement-wise, we do have a Seiko NH35A. It's your standard workhorse with a standard beat rate, packing hand winding, and a 40-ish hour power reserve pretty much what you expect at this price range. Now, as far as the bracelet goes, it is integrated by the central link as I showed you before. And that means you could probably jury rig something if you wanted to, but otherwise you're pretty much stuck with what you got. So it's a good thing that the bracelet is pretty good for its price, which has these nice solid fully articulating links in this sort of royal oak-like design with these smaller links. And again, the edges are a touch sharp, but that is part of the design, and I think it's actually a little bit better than the case. It also tapers rather aggressively, going from about 24.5 millimeters all the way down to 15.5 at the clasp. And all of this just translates into a very comfortable watch to wear, especially with those smaller links, as they just seem to conform to your wrist better. The end result is just a really cool, comfortable watch to wear, something you could wear all day without any issue and something that just stands out with a large presence. With regard to value, I think the pre-order price is pretty good, but the MSRP is just okay. There are a lot of watches, and good watches at that, in this $200 to $300 price range, and most of them have the same Seiko NH35A movement. And for the most part, this pretty much falls in line with the rest of them. So at that higher end, I think this is going to face some steep competition. However, I can't really think of another watch that has a Seiko NH35A movement in it that is this thin, and that is really saying something. The bigger question, and potentially the deal killer for a lot of people, is going to be this integrated bracelet. While it is a good bracelet, a lot of people like the option to change it out to something else, myself included in that. For no other reason than as time goes on, the scratches do start to add up. My only other real complaint with this watch is the loom, and I do know there are going to be some changes, and hopefully those will be for the better, because as it is now, it's pretty much no bueno with the loom. They might have well just left it off. But otherwise, this is a pretty cool casual sports watch, and I'm pretty curious to see what comes out of Milwaukee in the future. But let me know what you think about the successor down below. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for joining me. There's a certain point when it's snowing and cold, fashion sense pretty much just goes out of the window.